My name is Lily Krug. And my name is Ricardo Lara. Today we are going to talk to you about our study, What Affects Perceptions of Sexual Harassment? Many studies have been conducted pertaining to sexual harassment, and it can occur between many types of people, such as man to woman, woman to woman, man to man, woman to man, and more. However, it can also target sexual orientation. Male to female sexual harassment is the most common type of sexual harassment. Men sexually harass women in order to assert dominance. Women are more prone to report sexual harassment from a male perpetrator. Men experience sexual harass harassment on the same frequency as women. However, men are less likely to report sexual violation from women, especially as if they feel their masculinity would be compromised. Reports of sexual harassment where males are the victim are likely underestimated and underreported. This study examines sexual harassment based on different gender combinations of the perpetrator and the victim, especially with regard to the emotional perspective of each participant in terms of how they feel about the perpetrator and the victim and their behaviors. Participants were 165 individuals from Amazon's MTurk. The average age was about 35 and the standard deviation was 10.85. There were 95 males, 69 females, and one non-binary participant. Participants read through a, a series of five scenarios depicting various levels of sexual harassment. The scenarios were chosen from a previous study and represented the two that were rated on the lowest on perception of sexual, har sexual harassment, the two highest, and one in the middle. Participants were randomly presented with a different combination of genders for the perpetrator and the victim of the sexual harassment, male to female, female to male, male to male, and female to female. Participants rated each scenario that they read on seven dimensions. One, offensiveness. Two, sexual harassment. Three, cause of behavior internal to the perpetrator. Four, whether the behavior was under the control of the perpetrator. Five, likelihood of the perpetrator repeating the behavior. Six, sympathy for the victim. And seven, anger at the perpetrator, all on a scale of one to 10. Separate one-way MANOVAs were conducted on the scenarios. The significant results were in the extreme scenarios at the low high ends of sexual harassment. For scenario two, low sexual harassment, there were significant results for offensiveness of the behavior, sympathy for the victim, and anger at the perpetrator. Participants found that the female to female condition to be significantly less offensive than the other conditions. They had significantly more sympathy for the victim in the male to male conditions, and they were significantly more angry at the perpetrator in the male to female condition. For scenario five, high sexual harassment, there were significant results for offensiveness, perceptions of sexual harassment, sympathy for the victim, and anger at the perpetrator. Participants found the male to female condition to be most offensive and the female to male condition to be the least offensive. Comparably, participants were least likely to view the female to male condition as sexual harassment. Participants had the most sympathy for the victim in the male to female and male to male conditions and the least sympathy in the female to male condition. Finally, participants experienced the most anger in the male-to-female and male-to-male conditions and the least anger in the female-to-male condition. This study investigates the different perceptions of sexual harassment based on the randomized gender combinations for the perpetrator and victim of the scenario and their emotional perspective. The results of this study suggest that people take a harsher view of, male, of a male perpetrator of sexual harassment as shown by the findings that when the perpetrators were male, individuals experienced the most anger, and when the perpetrators were female, individuals were the least likely to view the actions as sexual harassment and had the, had the least sympathy for the victims. Additionally, based on the results of this study, we conclude that individuals are more likely to perceive sexual harassment as less offensive when the perpetrator is female and more offensive when the perpetrator is male. This is likely due to the fact that reports of sexual harassment where males are the victim and females are the perpetrator in any gender combination are underestimated and underreported. This study suggests that sexual harassment perpetrated by females may be more likely to be downplayed, but this would be doing a disservice to the victims of such harassment. This finding suggests that organizations should be more sensitive to sexual harassment and educate their employees on the subject. Doing so would cause a decline in sexual harassment and expand in sexual harassment awareness. Not only is sexual harassment a serious threat to employees in an organization, 
It is also an event that goes unnoticed or ignored by other employees or even organizations. When it comes to sexual harassment in any form, gender, combination, victim, and slash or the perpetrator, sexual orientation, or gender, that should not affect employees' actions to report. Here, all the research studies that were used, utilized to learn more about sexual harassment, participants' perceptions, and different combinations of gender and sexual harassment and the workplace. <laughs> Lastly, we wanted to say thank you to all of our participants, Dr. Cheryl Stenmark, and to you, our audience. Thank you for your time.